Alright, Assalamualaikum and uh, good day to all. So today we are going to be learning the first chapter in uh, engineering mechanics, which is called introduction and also forces in uh, 2D and also 3D. So this subject, 50% uh, is on statics and another half will be on uh, dynamics. So for this first week, we are going to be learning on uh, statics first. So going on uh, directly in uh, the subject, but before that, let's look at uh, our some of the pictures in front here. If you look in front here, you can see a lot of uh, objects, machineries, equipments, designs, which is involving uh, forces, involving a lot of calculations on uh, deflections, involved in a lot of calculation on, on the functions itself. So all these has to be sorted out using your knowledge in engineering mechanics. So in engineering mechanics, in mechanics itself, we can uh, divide them into three branch. Number one is something called rigid body mechanics. So rigid bo body mechanics is uh, bodies which is rigid. Uh, so under rigid body mechanics, you have something called engineering mechanics. So this is what we are learning now. You are learning something called rigid body mechanics. So there is no deformation. So under rigid body mechanics, there is no deformation. Next, you will be learning this one probably in your second year, something called deformable body mechanics. So and, and it also it is also known as something called strength of materials. So under this subject, you will learn about uh, objects under deformation you will learn about stress you will learn about strain you will learn about uh, deflection so all these things on strength of materials you will also learn on uh, other terminologies such as safety factor and you will learn to choose suitable material for engineering applications so when you learn when you're learning engineering mechanics, you don't learn about all the stress strain yet. And you don't learn about material selection yet. No material selection. No material selection. All those material selection you'll be learning it in strength of materials. Next, under mechanics branch is something called fluid mechanics. So fluid mechanics, you will learn more on uh, fluid mechanics. Lah. Under fluid mechanics, also you have a lot of branches, things like uh, fluid statics, fluid dynamics, all those things. So, let's go back to our subject, which is called engineering mechanics or rigid body mechanics. So, under rigid body mechanics, you'll be learning uh, two things statics and also dynamics. So, static is for objects which is uh, at rest or under constant velocity so this is the thing lah. you are here engineering mechanics you'll be learning statics first and then you'll be learning something called dynamics and other dynamics there are two major branch one is kinetics and the other one is kinematics so don't worry about this we'll get this when the time comes uh, next part is on dynamics. So under dynamics, you will be learning on objects under motion and acceleration. So on the bigger picture of engineering mechanics, so you've got uh, all these things. Lah. You've got fluid mechanics. Under fluid mechanics, it's, it's big. It's huge. There are a lot of uh, knowledge that you have to go through. Some you will learn, some you will not learn. But uh, ideally, you will learn everything in general. Lah. This is on fluid mechanics. So this is uh, our subject now, which is on solid mechanics. 
this is what we are right now statics and dynamics you learn kinematics and kinetics definitely under deformable bodies you learn things like strength of materials theory of elasticity and uh, something called theory of plasticity i guess for your subject you'll be learning this one only these are more advanced subjects uh, you will not be learning this okay moving on so engineering mechanics is mostly based on uh, newton's three laws of motion so you've learned about newton's laws of motion before so you've got uh, the first law of motion which is if a particle is originally at rest or if it's already moving in a straight line with constant velocity so it should be uh, static velocity is equal to zero or velocity is constant so this particle uh, will remain in its original state subjected to provided that this particle is not subject to an unbalanced force so an object at rest will remain at rest an object moving at a constant velocity will remain in constant velocity unless you provide unbalanced force so that's is a better way to understand it so second law so for first law you'll be learning something called on uh, equilibrium so this one you will learn uh, equilibrium which is on statics so second law uh, f is equal to ma lah. this is the main equation for it so a particle acted upon an unbalanced force f experiences acceleration that has the same direction as the force and the magnitude that is directly proportional to the force so easy sand is summation f is equal to ma this is for newton's second law and third law mutual forces of action and reaction between two particles are equal opposite and collinear so this is one every action has uh, equal reaction so under uh, newton's second law there is also something called newton's law of gravitational attraction so you've got law of gravitational attraction so f is the force of gravitational between two particles uh, this is force and you've got g which is the universal constant of gravitation m1 and m2 is the two particles so and r is the distance between the two particles so this is the laws of gravitational attraction so other things that you have to understand is you have to be very good in unit conversion so unit conversion you can do uh, something like this huh? so let's say you've got uh, two kilometer per hour you want to convert to meter per second so a good way is to write down two kilometer per hour so how to eliminate hour you have to put hour at the top so you've got one hour at the top uh, you want to convert it to second right so one hour is equivalent to 3600 second where does it come from 60 times 60 lah 3600 second 60 minutes and 60 seconds so one hour is equivalent to 3600 second one hour is equivalent so top is equivalent to bottom when you divide them you get uh, you get one so next you want to eliminate kilometer kilometer is at the top so you got to bring kilometer down so one kilometer is equivalent to 1000 meter 
So this is an easy way for you to convert almost anything. In fact, anything. So kilometer is top here, you can uh, eliminate. Hour is bottom here, you can eliminate with hour at the top. Again, 1000 meter divided by 1 kilometer is equivalent to 1. Because top equivalent to the bottom. So now, the only unit that's left is meter over second. So you've got 2 times 1000 meter divided by 3600 second. So this would be your answer. So the answer would be 0 0.556 meter per second. Uh, so that's the thing. So you can use this in a lot of uh, conversion. Uh, other things to uh, take note is that your final answer should be at least three significant figures. Um, you need to round off. So let's maintain three sig significant figures. So let's say 2.1 kilo newton. Mm, this is two significant figure. Probably your answer should be 2.15 kilo newton. Uh, this is good enough. If you're having like 0 0.1 newton. Or 0 0.15 Newton. So maintain a uh, proper significant figures. Alright, so now let's uh, go into something called Scala format and also vector format. So basically you've got two things. One is Scala and the other one is vector. So scalar quantities, quantity, is uh, characterized by only the magnitude. So you only have the magnitude. For example, mass. Mass is in kilogram. Volume is probably in meter cube. Length is in meter. So it does not have any direction. For these things, there's no direction. However, for vector quantity, you have something called direction. So this is unique for vector. So vector quantities, you have something called direction. Not only you have magnitude, both will have magnitude. But for vector, you have something called direction. So direction is very important. So the important thing is... Yeah, direction. For this one, you only have magnitude. But for vector, you have two things. Lah. Magnitude and also direction. So how do we go about that? Let's uh, give an example for vector quantities. So something like uh, position. Position force and also moment all these things will have uh, arrows direction up down left right something with an angle so all these are vector components so vectors you can add them up and you can subtract them up so if you have uh, for example force let's say you've got one newton plus 2 newton the answer would be a very long vector called 3 newton so magnitude and direction is important so you can add uh, vectors and also you can subtract vectors so there are a few methods lah, to solve uh, vectors and one of them is using something called parallelogram. So when you are using parallelogram, you are basically using a graphical method.
So let's say if you look here, this is a bracket. So this bracket has two forces. One is F1 here. Another one is F2 here. So you can resolve these two forces by drawing a parallelogram. So this F1 is parallel to this line. So next you draw a line which is parallel to the other force. So this one is parallel to here. This is parallel, this is parallel. So once you've done that, take the origin. So this is something called origin. So and draw another force vector. So this is the resultant. So basically, FR, which is typically known as a resultant, is the summation of both F1 plus F2. But the only thing is you have to add them up uh, graphically. So in order to solve this, you can either solve the whole triangle uh, rectangle or you can just take the top. So you can also take this one, take this triangle. So you can solve this triangle by looking at um, either cosine law, which is, you can solve it using this formula, or you can even look at sine law. So this is sine law. So for example, C, huh? so this is your triangle. C is what you need to find, right? So C is what you need to find. What is A? A is this one. A is F1. So let's label them. This is actually F1. This is actually F2. This is actually FR. So A you know. B you know. 2AB you know. You need to find a cos C. What is cos C? In this case, cos C is this one. Lah. This angle, this theta. So this is how you solve using cosine law. You can also apply uh, sine law, which is A over sine A. A now becomes, let's take this one first. A over sine A. A is already F1 lah. Sin A is this angle, alpha probably, uh, something like that. So you have to look back at uh, your trigonometry knowledge. Something on rectangles and uh, triangles. So the most basic one is this one, right? For triangles, you've got theta 1 theta 2, theta 3. The summation of all the thetas, theta 1 plus theta 2 plus theta 3 is equivalent to 180 degrees. This is for a triangle. So for a rectangle, whether the rectangle is like this or slightly slanted like that, the total is always uh, 360 degrees. The total summation of angles. All the thetas. And this one is definitely la, all 90s. 90 degrees times 4. 360 degrees, okay? So before we uh, do this, we have to test our knowledge on drawing parallelogram so let's try if you have a force like this another force is like this hmm. let me draw something peculiar a bit let's say this is uh, 20 newton this looks a bit more 35 newton so when you want to draw your uh, parallelogram you just have to draw one parallel line another parallel line this is parallel to here, 
this one is parallel to here so once you've got that it's very easy you just connect your origin which is here or connect this one so let's say if 20 newton is uh, 20 centimeter let's say yeah uh, you can even use your ruler 20 newton 20 centimeter 35 newton you can measure using your ruler also 35 centimeter lah kan what else 20 centimeter 35 centimeter now take your same ruler let's say you measure this one as uh, i don't know this is probably not not right let's say you get 42 centimeter so 42 centimeter is actually equivalent to 42 newton so graphically that's what is basically happening you are using graphical methods so something like this uh, something else um, this one this one with this one if you want to try that out you can use your own paper this line is parallel with this line this line is parallel with this line parallel this one parallel with this one this one is parallel with this one so next thing you do is okay slightly bad it's like that lah so this is let's say this one how much ah huh? never mind lah f1 this is f2 so this one will be your fr resultant this is your origin so it's very easy and very quick for you to get an estimation lah, what is your results should be so only problem is if you have a lot of this a lot so if you have a lot you need to do a lot of things lah. you need to do multiple multiple parallelograms this one parallel with this one so you get the new like this this one parallel with this one you get a new one like this so as a result you have some two two forces like this and then what you do another parallelogram now you have to do two things another parallelogram then you're going to get the final answer this is your fr this is your fr original lah fr1 probably this one is fr2 this one is fr3 so there's a lot of steps and you tend to make a lot of mistakes it is very convenient if your problem is simple however if your problem has become complicated it's not worth it so graphical methods can get you so far but it's very very good for estimation estimation is very good okay so there's a method to solve this so this is an example for you to solve using something called parallelogram so let's look at how your parallelogram should be drawn so this is the thing ah. you draw it properly and solve all the angles on it so this is 15 this is 10 so this is the original thing that you know 15 and also 10 so what else <coughs> So you can find out lah what is this angle 15 plus 10 25 so 90 minus 25 you get this as 65 if this is uh, 65 this is also 65 so the total rectangle should be 360 so 
360 minus 2 times 65 divided by 2 lah because you have both two sides this side and this side so that's how you get 115 so solving using a uh, cosine law you're gonna get something like this lah solving using cosine law you're gonna get fr which is 212.6 newton so this is the method if you want to solve it using a graphical method or using trigonometry uh, very good for simple problems however for complex problem let's learn something new lah, which is solving using vector method so vector method is very systematic very systematic you can learn vector methods actually we are going to be learning everything in engineering mechanics using uh, vector methods and not um, graphical method okay so for vector method you can use something called you need to do something called you need to resolve resolve the forces so we need to do something called resolve the forces so let's take a look uh, definitely okay so let's look at this one let's say I have a force of F okay this is my force which is called F so F is here this is your F this F you can resolve it into two components which is X component and Y component So, the x component, we can give it a name as something called fx. And the y component, we can name it as fy. Why resolve like this? I guess I have to put another screen. White screen. So, your force, you can resolve into two components. This one and also this one. this let's say this one is uh 100 newton and this one is 30 degrees this component is called fx and this component is called fy so it's basically completing a triangle this is a triangle or trigonometry so theta what is uh, sine theta? So this Fy is actually the same length as this one. Same length as this one. So this is basically same length as Fy. So if this is 100 Newton, this is your Fx. This is your Fy. So let's list down. What is sine theta? still remember what is sine theta so if you look at this triangle sine theta is opposite right sine you're looking at sine opposite so this is sine opposite O P P opposite. So what do you see? Ah, uh? uh, you're gonna see this one lah. Opposite over hypotenuse. So 100 newton is actually your hypotenuse. This is something called adjacent. There you go. So final answer would be 
fy over 100 newton so by looking at this you can make it uh, more simple so this one you can bring it over here you're gonna see fy is equal to 100 sine theta so next let's look at cos cos theta is equivalent to adjacent or fx over 100 newton so this one this one you can bring it over here you're gonna get something called fx is equal to 100 cos theta so this is what you get when you resolve into vectors what is our force? our force is 100 newton resolve into two components so the components that you get is this one lah 100 cos theta and 100 sine theta so that's what you get so if you still remember your trigonometry if this one is A, this one is B, this one is C you can get hypotenuse by using this formula A squared plus B squared and square root you're gonna get C or something like this a squared plus b squared equals c squared, right? So you can change it to become like this. Lah. So this uh, is the same thing which is happening here. You can get fr is equivalent to fx squared plus fy squared square root. So what we have been doing is something called we are resolving forces into x and y components. So that's what we are doing right now. So the thing that you have to remember is um, summation fx is adjacent so cos opposite is sine so cos theta is for your fx sine theta is for your fy <coughs> depending on your triangles ok now you can look at this and also you can uh, get the angle by using tangent negative 1 y over x so this is how you solve forces using vector looks complicated but it's actually very very easy so the when you're using uh, vectors you need to use the notation lah, i and j So normally for vectors, for example, like this, x is considered i component, y is considered j component. So when you resolve into vectors, you're going to get uh, components. So for example, this one, well, this one should be shorter a bit, uh, same length like that. Uh component this is positive i this is positive j how about this one this one is going to be like that negative i positive j how about the final one which is this color like this and like that positive i negative j 
so that is the how it looks like huh? to the right is positive to the left is negative going up is positive going down is a negative so yeah you can look at this one this is how you denote this is how you denote all the forces when you are using vector method F3 positive I negative J there you go so all are restricted to this Cartesian coordinate lah. so Cartesian coordinate of this one I J negative J negative I okay that's how you resolve things okay so let's look at uh, some uh, very simple examples so look at F1 F1 is uh, this is the method to do it lah. you can press next in your lecture notes but let's look at it first so look at F1 F1 is like that mm. Let me draw properly. Okay, <laughs> that one. It's very hard to get a straight line. Okay, now we got it. So 200 Newton here. 200 Newton. So this is the component. This will be your Fx. This will be your Fy. Your Fy, you can bring it over here. This is your Fy. You can bring it over here. Theta is uh, 30 degrees here. 30 degrees, eh? You can even solve using 60 degrees here. So, when you look at this, probably you're going to look at it and you're going to think it's, oh, this is still complicated. You can even simplify it into a triangle. So, the triangle is having 60 degrees angle this is your Fy this is your Fx this is 200 Newton so remember lah, your adjacent is cos so Fx is equivalent to 200 cos 60 and it's going to the left so it's going to be negative i how about fy fy is equivalent to this one is adjacent no this one is opposite so opposite is sine so it's going to be 200 sine 60 degrees it's going up so it's positive j it's like that lah. so F R is actually equivalent to F X champo F Y, which is equivalent to negative two hundred cos sixty I plus two hundred sine sixty J. So this is how it looks like now. Cos sixty. Let us solve it cos 60 is equivalent to 0 0.5 eh? negative 100 i 200 sin 60 is equivalent to 173.2 j uh, so this is the answer lah. this is actually f1 so this is very important so you might want to highlight this one you might want to make it a rectangle so if you are not confident your answer is correct you can check fr is equivalent to fx squared plus fy squared and square root so 100 squared 
So it doesn't matter. You don't need to put the negative. Why? Because you're squaring it. It's going to be positive anyway. So Fy is 173.2 squared. And then you square root. So use your calculator. Punch in the number. You should get somewhere like this. Lah. 199.99 Newton. So which is equivalent to... 200 Newton, which is the original value. So there you go. This is how you solve using vector method. So F1. And now you have to solve F2. So let's solve F2. F2 is actually uh, in the lower quadrant. This is F2. Something like that. Let's draw properly. Straight line. Uh, something like that. This is 260 Newton. Okay. Next thing you see is you see something called a gradient. So this gradient, it's a triangle like that. So you've got 5, 12, and 13. So, this 260 Newton, you need to resolve, right? 260, resolve into two components. This will be fx, this will be fy. So, very easy, lah. Fx. Just put 260. And then put a bracket. So look at the gradients. The bottom will always be the hypotenuse, which is 13. Now, look at Fy. It's 260. The bottom will always be hypotenuse, which is 13. So now, fx. fx is actually horizontal. Right? Horizontal. So look at the horizontal component, which is 12. So if the horizontal component is 12, you have to put here 12. Next. Look at the vertical component, which is fy. So fy is this one vertical so since the vertical component is 5 we just have to put 5 over here then you will get the value what is the value you can key in the calculator lah. 260 times 12 divided by 13 so you get yourself 240 Newton. How about the bottom one? 100. Bottom one is actually 100 Newton. So, this is actually F2, right? F2. So, you need to write down F2 actually. F2 is actually both components lah. This one is actually positive i. This is positive i. This one is negative j. So you're going to get yourself 240i minus 100j. So this is the two components which is important lah. Next thing you do, add them up. Fr is equivalent to F1 plus F2, which is equivalent to negative 100i plus 173.2j plus 240i minus 100j. There you go. 
this is the final answer what is the value I you add with I lah. you cannot add I and J right so very important also I component you have to solve and add I component together so negative 100 plus 240 of course you're gonna get 140 I now look at this one 173 minus 100 so you're gonna get plus 73.2 J correct ah 140i 73.2j so this is the answer but uh, final answer in terms of magnitude you need to add them up what I mean is yeah you have to use this one what we did before just now in order to get final answer you have to find the magnitude so magnitude will be 140 squared plus 73.2 squared and square root now what do you get what is the value 140 squared plus 73.2 squared don't forget to square root you're gonna get 157.9 157.9 newton 158 newton still not the final answer you have to find the new theta what is the new theta new theta would be yeah if you were to draw this uh, vector it's going to be to the right 140 going up 73.2 this is your final answer lah. what is this 158 uh, you have to find this one this theta so this theta is actually tangent negative 1 f y over f x yeah what is it what is the value that's right here small, small one theta tangent negative 1 f y here lah 73.2 f x here lah 140 Then you get the answer. 73.2 divided by 140. Shift tangent. 27.6. That is the value. Your answer that you're looking for is 27.6 degrees. That is the answer. Is it correct? yeah it's correct so that is how you solve using vector method so now again you can uh, solve a new problem so solve this solve this on your own you gotta solve this on your own so pause the video pause the video right pause the video hit the space uh, bar and try to solve this on your own on your own paper Alright, so if you have managed to solve it on your own, now is the time for you to check your answer. 
whether it is correct or not. So let's check. So resolve. You're going to have 600 in turn. You're going to get two components. This one and also this one. So this one will be your fx. This one will be your fy. So you have to solve one by one. Lah. Solve f1 first. So F1 is equivalent to what is the given answer? Are you okay? Yeah, 600 cos theta i. This is the triangle. So 600 cos theta and uh, 600 sine theta, which is 30 degrees. Both are positive and positive. Positive i, positive j. But for F2, you're going to get negative i. So if you're using 45 on top, it is uh, opposite. Lah. So it becomes sine 45. And next will be cos 45. Since the theta that we are using is here, it's on top. Next, you got to add them up in order to get F resultant. So add them up. Solve one by one. And this is the final answer. And remember, next is we need to get F resultant. So the resultant force. Take this one, take this one, square, take this one, square and square root. <coughs> so this is the final answer for the magnitude. Definitely, you need to find the angle. And what is the new angle's direction? Uh, this is it. If you look at this uh, answer, this one is FR, right? This one is FR. 236.8 is positive going to the right. 582.8 it's positive going up. So this is the resultant. And this is our new angle. 67.9 degrees. Remember, we are using something called vector method. When you're solving vector, you need two things, which is magnitude and angle. So this is your magnitude, this is your angle. So what does this mean? So look at the problem. What does this mean? You need to be able to decipher all this. This is 67.9 degrees. It means, what is the result? Uh, FR value. Uh? FR is equal to 629. So what does this mean? It means, if you have two force, one like this, and one like like this, 400. This is 600 plus 400. This two cable is actually similar to this. 629 Newton at 68 degrees angle. Uh, that is the meaning of it. Lah. One force like this plus one force like this you are actually giving an effective force of one direction like this only. That is the meaning. So now you have to do exercise. How many exercises do we have for this part? You have a lot of exercise. Let's do a couple more before we conclude. All right, so let's take a look at our next 
example which is this problem let's look at exercise 4 obviously you've got a lot more to deal with here you've got um, so number one what is this called this is something called a gusset plate you can look at this a lot of uh, structural elements so you've got beams all these beams are connected to each other so we are solving something called now uh, let's find out what is the magnitude and resultant force and the direction measured clock counterclockwise from the from positive x uh, probably normally it's like that from positive x so something like this we have to try first on your own so you gotta try it on your own first mm, yeah you should pause the video and try So assuming you have tried, let's look at the answer. I will clear some space. So let's look at how we can solve this. So, so something like this, you can solve it. So this one is, uh, this is the force. Obviously, 15 kilonewton, no problem. F2 is going up, 20 kilonewton. F1. F1, you can really transfer them. Yeah, you can do that. You can transfer if you are not comfortable solving this one. If you're comfortable, it's fine. This is how the resultant should look like. So it doesn't matter if your force is going like this. You, okay, if you have a point like this, your force is going this way. It doesn't matter, you can draw it like that. You can transfer. Transfer. And most of the time, I will transfer. So when you transfer, so it becomes like this. Huh? So if you were to look at uh, this uh, gradient angles, if you were to draw this way, also can lah. It should be 5 here, 4 over here, 3 over there. Same thing. You can flip it outwards. It's the same thing. Okay. So I guess it's better to transfer. Once you have transferred, resolve them. You have to resolve uh, this one. This was originally 15 kilonewton, right? Uh, this was originally also same 15 kilonewton what is this this is actually f1 this was actually f3 this was actually f2 so all these things so once you've got that you can uh, solve one by one lah. For example, I solve F3 first. F3. Look at uh, F3 components. You've got two. 15, 4 over 5i. 15, 3 over 5. Why is it like that? This one lah. This one horizontal 4, right? So 4 over 5. This one vertical 3, right? So 3 over 5. So you got F3 is called... This one lah. 12i plus 9j. So you don't need to put the unit kilonewton. No need. Don't put unit yet. Put unit at the end of your answer. Next thing is very easy lah. F2. F2 is very straightforward. 
it's only 20j going up after that you've got f1 the one that you have transferred so when you're transferring it this one is actually negative j so that's why you have one negative answer so once you've got that right you have to add them up lah. f3 plus f2 plus f1 or you can even solve f1 plus f2 plus f3 either way so this is the final answer definitely you need to get the magnitude uh, obviously this one is like that lah. this one is actually uh, power of 2 square root lah. square root 24 squared plus 20 squared and this is the final theta so if you were to draw this vector you're gonna get something like this lah. 24i 20j this is the resultant the resultant length is 31.24 kilonewton okay next how many questions you have to do before we go to 3d uh, you have plenty more lah. you have two more actually Ah, now look at this one how are you going to solve this this one is very interesting is there a value no ah. mm, let's keep this as f1 let's say this one is f2 so let's solve this this one is f eh if the resultant force acting on the bracket is to be 750 newton okay so f is equal to 750 newton directed along the positive x-axis determine the magnitude f okay it looks weird eh? it looks weird so yeah if you read properly it says resultant force is 750 newton directed along positive x-axis so it's like this huh? f r is equivalent to f plus f1 plus f2 resultant is 750i this is the resultant why 750 positive x-axis so this is resultant f don't know f1 yes you know f2 yes you know so how do you do this? Yeah, it's very easy. You can solve uh, this one by reversing this equation. Uh, using uh, algebra fr minus f1 minus f2 is equivalent to f. You are trying to find f. You're trying to find this one. So you can do this lah. So in order to do this, you have to resolve everything into vectors. Resolve into vectors i and j. So let's do for f1 first. F1, what is it? 3, 2, 5 bracket plus 3, 2, 5 bracket what is the bracket? 
the bottom is always hypotenuse 13 13 now this part is horizontal so the horizontal part is always horizontal part lah take this one lah 5 this one is actually i component so now look at this one vertical part is 12 this is vertical part right this is j component this was i component so this one is 12 j so if you solve this what do you get 325 kali 5 3 to 5 times 5 divided by 13 so you get 1 to 5 i plus Three hundred, three hundred G. So this is actually F one. So F one is very important. You need to rectangle it. Why? Because you are using this again. Next, F two. Where is my F two? This is my F two. It's equivalent to. 600 cos 45i minus 600 sin 45j why is it minus because <coughs> when you resolve it you have this component and this component one is positive i one is negative j Alright, so that's why. <coughs> so let's solve this one. 600 cos 45. 4 to 4.3i minus 4 to 4.3i. 3J. So this is important to ah, this one is definitely very important, right? This one is FR. I should write again. Huh? FR is equal to 750I. Important things, rectangle them. Important things. Make sure you have a rectangle. <coughs> so now you are going to be using this one. Lah. Use this equation. What equation is that? Fr minus F1 minus F2 dapat lah F. So you go right, da right down back. Fr berapa? It's going to be a long one. Ah. I think seven five zero I minus F one rubber one two five I plus three hundred G minus F two four two four point three I minus Four to four point three J. Did we get everything correctly? This one is equivalent to F. So when you're dealing with vector, uh, don't forget. Right? Don't forget. When you break the brackets, you got to do it properly, lah. When you break the bracket, seven five zero i minus one two five i minus three hundred j minus four two four point three i plus four two four point three j. So that's what happened when you remove your brackets. So now, 
Now you gotta look at all i components. All i components. All i components. So what do we get? Seven five zero minus one two five minus four two four point three. You're gonna get yourself two hundred point seven I. I think we're gonna get plus this one. Uh one two four point three. Mm, this is your F. Mm. Uh, we correct ah. Uh. Two hundred point seven. Three to five newton. No, oh, this is wrong lah. I don't think this answer is correct. Wrong answer this one. Everything is in newton ah, not kilo newton. Okay, so this is the answer lah. Definitely need to find magnitude. Mm. Fr is 200.7 squared plus 124.3 squared square root. What is the job? 0.7 squared plus 124.3 squared square root. Two three six. Two three six Newton. So this one should be two three six Newton. What is the theta? Now let's check it out. Theta is actually tangent negative one F Y over F X. Tangent negative one one two four point three divided by 200.7 Shift tangent 31.8 actually The value should be 31.8 degrees This is your theta 31.8 degrees So you should always check lah Check Check your answer, check my answer. I may make some mistakes. So let me know if I make any mistakes. How are we doing? This one. <coughs> this is the last one. Let's uh, understand the problem first. This is a problem. We gotta understand the problem first. Determine the magnitude Fa. Fa tak tahu. And its direction theta. Okay, theta here. So that the resultant force is directed along positive x-axis has a magnitude of 1250. Yeah, almost similar to previous question. This is your Fr. And it's equivalent to 1250 Newton. So it's like this. Lah. The main equation is Fr is equivalent to Fa plus Fb. Fr is actually 1250i. Fa definitely will have I component, J component. I positive component, J positive component. Plus FB. FB you're going to get plus I component but negative J component. Why? Because it's going down, right? This one's going up. So similarly, lah. Uh, this is the main algebraic equation. You need to find this one, FA. You can even rearrange. 
f a is equivalent to <coughs> f a is equivalent to f r minus f b so that's the thing lah that it's trying to find so this one i think this answer is correct correct so yeah do this your own okay so there are a lot more uh, tutorial questions try out all the tutorial questions after this we're going to be learning forces in 3d so before we move on to 3d you need to be very very good in 2d all right see you guys